you, Charlotte. I miss you. I miss, I miss you. you. No other way to say it. And I, I can't I missed you, deny but it. I, I do really did enjoy summer a little bit, I gotta say. Screw honestly. you, Soki. Screw you and your vacations. <laughs> Listen, no, you're was, the one that was traveling all over. That's true. That was like, that seemed like a forever break, huh? Two weeks, a long time. Sook, you know why I'm singing? forever enough, man. Let me tell you. You know why I'm singing I Miss You? That's because Brenda K. Star is coming on on Thursday. Little Brenda K. Star. Remember her? uh susan anton tomorrow night we got steve greenberg the gadget guy tomorrow night thursday night we got jamie roberts who's a uh, a share impersonator very cool do you believe in life after oh love? yeah this guy this guy's the real deal Suki, we got an amazing show tonight it's great to be back with everybody i think our viewers are having uh, heart attacks while we were away nothing to do just waiting for us think, to get back i think I think you know how they say, you know, sometimes, you know, the heart grows fonder. They appreciate yeah. us. I mean, they uh -huh. love us so much more now. Listen, well, I was in a drunken stupor in Nashville. They were pining away for this show. And uh, we've got a really good one on tap. I changed around our open a little bit while we're on the break. I added a few new things you may notice. But uh, we'll talk about who's coming on next. Uh, we'll start the show off. First one of the uh, summer season. Sue, here you go. The Suki and Scott Show. This is one of the funnest shows I've ever done. Lady, when you're with me, I'm smiling. It's musical. It's magical. Suki and Scott, the seven of hearts. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. This is a sexy show. Someone's yeah. getting some action. Now, these larger-than-life personalities are on an exciting new journey as they bring you... The Suki and Scott Show. You guys I nailed it. You're great. You ask great questions. You listen. I answered you because I have respect for you guys, and it was a question respectfully put. The Suki and Scott Show is your one-stop destination for humor. You like De Niro and Kate Pierre. Counselor! Entertainment. Jesse's Jesse's girl. Girl. Wonderful. Can you paint with all the colors of the wind? <laughs> and optimism. You guys have such amazing energy. Ultraviolet lady gets in there and it just fights. It just fights the uh, gun flu. Is that right? Okay. <laughs> Let's laugh together. We we'll love him. The Suki and Scott Show. Ah, yes, indeed, Suki. We laugh. We laugh together. Uh, you have no bananas in the background, or are they all green? You know I what? I didn't get tell. the banana tip. Yeah, I, I was thinking about that. She ate the last <laughs> of the bananas this morning. <laughs> uh, Suk, listen, everybody already writing. We missed you all. Everybody's happy because our, our audience talks. They're best friends with each other. Everybody, Nobody can talk to each other unless we're doing this show. I don't understand that, Suk. They should all have each other's emails by now. It's It's insane. I, I would think that they've actually met up in like these meetup groups that used to have. Remember that they were like having like tweet <laughs> groups and meetup groups, Facebook watch groups. Yeah. But you know, but you know what? Like they say, like peaches and herbs said, reunited and it feels so good. Reunited. Suk, what a show we have tonight. We have a young lady on the show who you follow, because I saw you follow her. Spicy. I was going to call her Spicy Mary. Spicy Mari. But it's Spicy Mari. Uh, Spicy Mari. She is like this magnetic matchmaker relationship expert. She's not a dating expert, Suk. So we're not talking short term here. She goes for the long, long relationship. Yes. COVID is kind of over right now. And if you're looking for love post-COVID, Spicy Mari's got the answers for you. Constantine Maroulis is stopping by. If you're looking for love post-COVID, yeah. come on over. Looking for love post-COVID, let us help you. <laughs> um, so, yeah, she's coming up in just a sec. Constantine Maroulis is going to join us in a little while. Constantine's got a new radio show out uh, on WABC here in New York and, and WABC.com across the country. Uh, and then uh, John Poveromo is coming on after that. John, one of the hottest comedians in the country right now. He just broke a world record uh, for a very good cause. We're going to talk about that a little later on. But uh, Suk, you, you had two weeks. You're all refreshed. You're good. You look healthy. I am. Healthy. I am. You're I got to tell roll. you, like, I don't think I'll ever be refreshed. But, yeah, I'm good <laughs> enough. It's good enough. Good enough, Scotty. In fact, when you were calling me, I was just like, I, I had these moments where I'm like, oh, my God, I got to. 
I gotta be somewhere at 7 30. <laughs> gotta be somewhere Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, people. Yeah. We're busy, no, busy. It, it's crazy. It's crazy. It's like, you know, I'm working all day on the show and I was like, man, I'm, I'm not used to this kind of work anymore. It's, you know, the, the, commute, the commute down to my basement's incredible. Um, Suk, real quick, couple couple quick uh, some, you know, some business that we got to take care of. Little Absolutely. business to take care of. I found over the vacation this new, uh, you know, you know us, you, I know you got some knee problems. I got all my cranky little joint problems. I found this new CBD oil company. Really? Uh, I, never, I never tried that stuff before. Um, right. And I haven't just, either, really. We have, I found this stuff. I feel like a million bucks, Soup. Not a thing has been bothering me. I want to intro, I'm going to putting together a little program with these folks because I want to introduce them to our audience because I know we're all, you know, at least 45 and over at least. Um, and if you got we're aches all and pains. 45 and over and we're yeah, feeling least, every minute yeah. of it. And we've got aches and pains and I'm going to introduce you to the CBD oil company probably by next week. Uh, and that they have codes for our customers and it's really, it's going to be amazing. Uh, everybody who watches this show is going to love it. Um, I saw something today that I just wanted to run this by you. You know how women and wives, when they say a phrase, it kind of means something else. They have their own, their own codes. Like I'm going to show you, for example, what I saw, Sue, five deadly terms used by women. The number one term is fine. Whenever you guys say fine, this is the word women use to end an argument when she knows she's right and you need to stop talking. Is that true? When you guys just say Very fine. Very true. Fine is like, yeah, whatever. Like for me, whatever is, uh, yeah, kind of the end term too. So. And Suk, when I say, well, down here it says whatever is number four. That's a woman's way of calling you an idiot. Kind of. When you just say whatever, women mean you're an idiot. Uh, if I say to my wife, honey, what's wrong? Is there anything? She says Nothing. nothing. That means something, and I, and I should be worried that I'm going to get a. You probably should the, ask one more question or two. Yeah, 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 yeah. Honey, can I go play golf with the boys? Number three, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> don't confuse this with permission. It's a dare, and don't even think about it. Right. <laughs> number four is whatever you said that one. All true. Number, All true. Right. Number five. Oh yeah, that's okay. Thinking long and yeah. hard, and how but it's, when it's you like pay how for we your say mistake. It if we're like fine. Nothing. Yeah. 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 Go mm -hmm. ahead. Go, go. <laughs> right. it's, like, it's like how we say it. If it's like, that's okay. I mean, that's okay. But if and it's like, yeah, that's okay. Yeah. yeah. The bonus word is, wow, this is not a compliment. She's amazed that one person can be so clueless. Scotty, you know what they say? It's always in the delivery. It's always <laughs> in the delivery. Suk, listen, before we bring in Spicy Mari, um, you want to say, I know everybody's been waiting to, to, to get this show back. You want to just talk, say hello to some of the some of the ladies oh. who are, are on. Well, from Giordano the is here, Kathy Roche, Anna Hoover, Irene Fitzhugh, Joyce Manis, Pam Apolloni, Brenda Ramsey, uh, and uh, Laura Nichols. There's a lot of people here. Sean Overton is here. Uh, <laughs> let me go back to the top. Cherry yeah, no, Hetrick, Susan everybody's Smith, loading up. Uh, Jeannie Clay, um, Chele. I, I always know. mess you, her you never get you never get that name. Right? Say her name, <laughs> or is it Seely? S C E L Chele. That I don't know, Sue. I don't okay, know. Uh, uh, and Roy Wright, Scott Richards, uh, yeah, Philippine Richardson. It looks like uh, Elisa Jewell. We missed you all. Hopefully, I'm saying everybody. Ava Sugars, uh, Yvonne Burns, I, Aaron Myers, Sue, uh, Deborah way, Casey. I think uh, I got everybody. Adrian though, Lucas. There's so many people that are, you know, but usual, all of our usual usuals are here, and we say hello to you. Uh, we are still the number one show over on the Stir platform, thanks to all of our viewers, beating out Heartland and Deal or No Deal. Uh, Suki and Scott show rolling number one over on the Stir platform, everybody. Download that app. Go check them out. Our shows are on all day long over there, and it's just uh, it's fantastic. Crackle Plus coming up soon. Another one of our uh, platforms, Crackle Plus, of course. Three, four million people uh, belong to Crackle Plus, and it's going to be – we got a big summer ahead. Lots of folks coming on. Well, and, oh, listen, um, Jeannie Clay just told me I didn't say hi to Donna. Donna, hi. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> Donna, I'll never forget you, Donna, for shut yeah. up. You know what, Jeannie? Until you're sitting in this seat, you're not the executive producer of the show, <laughs> You know what's right? so funny? Jeannie's like, I, and I even knew Donna's last name. 
Right. She was just saying. <laughs> Suka, are you ready for a little uh, relationship advice? Bring you it follow. up. Let's spice it up. You Let's heat it follow up. follow Spicy. So uh, we're going to bring her on in just a second, but I'm going to introduce everybody uh, to Spicy Mari, and then we'll bring her on the other side. Take a look. You are now tuned in to The Spicy Life, your one-stop shop for everything you were dying to know about relationships. Whether it's healing after a breakup, finding love, overcoming rejection, conquering social anxiety, improving your physical appearance, or just how to make lunch with your colleagues a little less awkward, we promise to make the learning process fun and of course we keep it spicy. Our goal is to transform perspectives and fuel connections. So mm, sounds awesome, right? But you're probably wondering what the heck makes this channel so spicy. The Spicy Life is challenging you to take a different approach to forming relationships. And uh, we're going to bring out the best in you so that you can bring out the best in others. The Spicy Life. Oh, the, spicy the Spicy Life. life. There she is, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> I should have known if there was a jingle, you guys would be able to sing it. We love it. We love it. We love. We love jingles. You know that, Marty. Come on. Spicy. I've been. I've been singing that friggin' thing all day. The spicy, the spicy life. life. I love it. I love it. How are you, young lady? Wait, before we get into all the relationship stuff, did I see on Instagram you're actually pregnant right now? Yes. I was yes. watching that video right now, and I was like, oh, my God, I don't look like that right now. I'm 40 pounds here with a baby. You're wow. creating Good. spicy life is creating life. Yes. I'm creating life right now. Um, it's incredible. Just had the baby shower. It was amazing. We did it at Malibu Cafe. And um, had a great turnout of just like people to love on me and my boy. I'm having a son. Oh, and I wanted a son so bad, and I'm just so grateful. <laughs> I'm so great. happy for you. Yeah, we got a spicy baby in the oven, so uh, he'll be due in a month and a half. <laughs> we so like you, it. We like it. Did you log on to your own website to get that advice on how to uh, <laughs> find a man and make a baby? Yeah, we just did an episode on like all the steps that we took. Um, took all my advice. I'm like, it's more than just like hoping and praying and shooting on a star. We like went through all the family planning and got together with our family and like sat them down, like huge conference call and Zoom call and was like, we're going to start planning, want to prepare the village for this new, you know, baby. And so it's been really, really good when it comes to like the journey of pregnancy for me so far. Well, wow. that is so good because I got to tell you, sometimes, you know, um, I feel like becoming a parent and Scott and I know this it adds another layer to your life. Yeah. It just really, I mean, it's, it's a good layer. Um, sometimes you want to tell them to go to bed layer and they just <laughs> don't want to, but it's just the way it is. It's just the way I'm it excited. is. I think you'll love it, Madi. I'm excited for what I'm going to learn about myself too in this like growth and development process. I'm looking forward to like, okay, me as a mom, um, you know, there's other oh, there's steps my entire life. Now this is going to be a new one that I'm super excited to experience. Yeah, Madi, you, you know what I figured grows. out about? I so figured much. out about myself as a parent that I love tequila now. Um, <laughs> it's, it's amazing. I, I knew just, that way before. <laughs> yeah, it makes, makes, makes everything better. But uh, listen, so how, how did you become, did you go through so many different things before you found your husband that you, you know, you became a relationship expert because of all the things you went through? Great question. Um, I, unlike a lot of people, um, knew my calling at a very, very young age. So I understood what the mission was. Um, as a little girl, I um, witnessed my mom in multiple relationships and saw the way that she treated us when she was in a relationship. She was happier, more giving. I got yeah. in trouble less. And so I started to start setting my mom up with men because I was like, oh, I'm going to get a dad with this. In addition to, in addition to all the benefits that come with, you know, to my freedom, me. my happiness. <laughs> right. So I um, was like in the gas station, the grocery store, setting her up. And mom was married multiple times, um, uh, three times, and has a boyfriend right now. So amazing. Shout out to mom. Nice. Um, but she really set the way for my perspective on relationships and me being like obsessed with setting people up. And then, of course, 
going through like studies, um, my education at UC Berkeley and then my education at USC, getting my master's in communication and finding out like all of the research that I did around the breakdowns of relationships and why they don't last, right? Cause I was like setting her up, setting all these other people up and like, hmm, there's more to this than just the connection. It's like, how do we sustain it? And so that's where the spicy method came along. And I cr yeah. created my company from there. All right, so nice. we got to do the fundamentals of how to be <laughs> spicy. We really do, because I feel like, yeah, we know that COVID has turned, like, you know, kind of put a wrench in everything. And everyone sort of went through what they had to last year. And I think that it was a reset for people who are single or people who are in relationships that didn't really want to be in those relationships. I think it sort of reaffirmed where people were going, hopefully. Yeah. Um, what, what, what are you seeing uh, in terms of, uh, in terms of a COVID and then B the fundamentals, because I certainly don't have it right. <laughs> so um, you're absolutely right. It was crazy for singles because they didn't get to have those interpersonal connections and they're like starved for attention, starved for love. Nobody imagined that being single the previous year was going to lead to a whole year, you know, of being in isolation. Mm -hmm. So singles didn't prepare for that. All right. But I think it put things in perspective for singles on, oh my gosh, relationships do matter. And during COVID was the busiest time for my business because so many people were like, I refuse to go through this another year by myself. Um, and what do I need to do to work on myself and change? And then when it came to couples, uh, a lot of couples had to decide like, is this the person who I belong with? Because now that we've been stuck together for so long in one place, we actually have to like think about and process, do we still like <laughs> each other? How do we get along? And so some people did not survive COVID um, and not COVID, the actual like virus, the pandemic, but like living together in the relationship during COVID. And then other people, it grew them closer when it came to the relationship because they got to spend time with that partner who they didn't get to see as much. I know it brought me and my husband a lot closer. And that's what actually like clicked for us when it came to, are we going to have a baby? Because we've been spending so much time putting our, you know, well, me, my baby, the spicy life. I was putting my career at the forefront of everything when it came to like building my empire. And then when COVID hit, I was like, well, what am I doing this for? I have no legacy to leave it to. Like, it's really family. This is about like relationships. What's my relationship with my child? I need to have one. Yeah. So I think, I think eventually everyone comes <laughs> to that point where, you know, we're really, what is it? I mean, I definitely was in that daily hustle all the time. Yeah. And it's all stripped away and taken away from you. Uh, you you really do think to yourself like what the hell was that all for like right. really it got no. to a certain point but it really it's not hugging you or you know loving you when you're going to bed or you know or taking care of you there's nothing reciprocal it's like it's a transact work is a transaction yeah. mm -hmm. and that's what people have to look at it like you know ultimately as you grow older it becomes more and more of a transaction goodbye <laughs> It's about her, right? <laughs> it really is. Bye. <laughs> I love it. You asked earlier what the fundamentals are and like you're hitting one of um, the spicy fundamentals, which is intimacy. So I'll start from like the beginning of the spicy fundamentals. Self, knowing who you are, what you want and what you have to offer is the first portion of like what I teach in my practice when it comes to relationships and then requiring that. Like how do, how do you demand, you know, that from someone else, the self-awareness element. And then passion, you know, what passion do you bring to the relationship? What are your hobbies? What are your shared interests? How do you bring passion out of your partner? And then intimacy, which is what you kind of touched on is like this bond and connection that we create. And how do we, you know, provide vulnerability and transparency in our relationship? And then communication, how do we deliver that message? How do we send the message? How do we receive it? And then the last portion is learning to say yes. How do we say yes to our partner and not no? <laughs> how do we, you know, override that and oftentimes um, override our lack of, you know, belief or our limiting beliefs, as I call it, when it comes to our fears and concerns. Like, how do we conquer those? So those are the five phases. Self, passion, intimacy, communication, and learning to say yes are the fundamental elements to a healthy relationship. It was like, so, that's the fundamentals to life, Scotty. What do you think? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm a little more, I'm a little simpler than that, Sook. You know me, you know the three things I need, but uh, listen. He needs when, food, water, and sex. Yeah. Those are the survive the three survivors. <laughs> Throwing a little money every once in a while, and I'm good. Um, <laughs> Scott, listen, spicy. We have we, so many women watch this show, and a lot of them are single. Some of them are are maybe divorced or or widowed. Um, but a, a lot of single women watch this show. Um, and and if if you're at that age, 45 and above, mm -hmm. 
you know, what, what's the key to trying to, you know, everybody at, at our age, you're, you're kind of set in your ways, right? So it's, it's even harder to find somebody else that you mesh with that isn't set in their ways. Um, so, so what does a, a, I guess a female or even a male at our age do if you're, you're at this point now where you're like, listen, I, I really would love to find a relationship. How, is it the online dating? Do you, do you put yourself out there? You start going out again. What's the, you know, what's the, what's the key? Great question. I think it's a compilation of both, right? So, and why the reason why I say compilation is because you, it's not enough to just say, I want to be in a relationship and like hope that one falls on your lap. Like right. majority of us, we are leaving, you know, fate in the, you know, the hands of the universe versus taking action and doing something about it. So I believe that it's the words that you say and the actions that you take that manifest the relationship that you want. So if you're in a position where you're single and you're like, look, I'm ready for love. Okay, well, are we telling people? Are we asking friends for and family even for referrals? Are we letting it be known? Um, are we be keeping our energy open? Are we going out to expose ourselves to new environments where the people who we actually desire hang out and exist? So if yeah. you want, you know, someone successful, are you going to places that successful people hang out? Um, are you going and putting yourself out there and then introducing yourself when you get there? Are you waiting for someone to come up to you and leaving it up to people and you're an option versus you see someone attractive and you're going up and speaking to them? So I really think it's like taking action and, you know, behaving in a way that serves your relationship goals, which is smiling, eye contact, flirting, being open and introducing yourself. And then also online dating. I am pro online dating. We have technology. Let's use the resources that we have Absolutely. and create a profile and find which page is best for you. Maybe it's the league. Maybe it's Bumble. Maybe it's Hinge. They all provide different services and what you need and the different types of people that are on there. Um, figure out which one works best for you and which one you have the most results on when it comes to like communicating. But you have to reach out. Even on there, you got to communicate. We can't keep the secret if you want to be in a relationship. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I um, like it. Keep it a secret if you really want to. <laughs> Do you know what? I, I just feel like, I mean, maybe I'm being nostalgic about this. I think if like, if you're going to be honest, if you, my husband said this today at lunch, which I thought was really funny. If we had met each other on an online profile, we would have never, mm -hmm. we would have just been like, yeah, no. <laughs> you know what I mean? And I think I think the reality is that people don't give each other a chance. You know, so it's, true. you know, the picture that you paint in your head isn't necessarily the picture you're going to be living, but long as it's a good enough picture to hang on the wall, it might be okay. You know yeah. what I mean? <laughs> like, I feel like people are just trapped in this perfection of how mm. they want to craft their life. And they, and listen, I'm all about put positivity, putting power into the universe, affirmation, yeah. You know, practicing what you, I'm all about that. But somehow I think that we're kind of lost a little bit in our society. I don't know. I might be wrong. I'm, you tell Maybe me, you're the expert. You are hitting the nail on the coffin. So what you're describing is kind of what's going on right now with um, online dating apps and sites is Baskin Robbins 31 flavors, because there's so many options people aren't choosing and they're taking longer in making a decision when it comes to who they want to commit to or who they're even willing to ask out. And because it's so visual, it's all about sexual attraction first and foremost. Yeah. And while attraction is important, um, there, it, the numbers are skewed in relation to how open-minded women are to the men that are available. And men, when it comes to women, men actually score women more attractive than women score men. Wait, wait, wait. So men are more open-minded than women? Yeah, so like, and I know it sounds crazy. <laughs> I know it sounds crazy, but the reason why I say this is because men don't score us as hard on beauty as we score men on beauty. Wow. So what us as women find sexually attracted, we can put a, a handful of men in front of women and they will only choose three out of the 20. Where men, they will choose at least like 13 to 14 out of the women who they find attractive. And so we're a lot harder on men. Because they're like, no, she's like three beers and a shot. Yeah, 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 yeah. He, you know, she, the one that's number 18 is like, you know, almost like the whole night and five shots later. <laughs> Then we, you got we make it harder than it should be. But if yeah, we, yeah. we do it based off of energy and how someone made us feel then a lot of people would have more chances. And that's why, you know, for so long, we were successful at relationships because it was men who were who were required to hunt 
and like come up at a protest. But now I'm telling and encouraging women that we have higher success when it comes to relationship, when we take initiative. Studies when show that it. we actually approach a man and we speak first, we're more likely to get what we want versus waiting to be chosen. Yeah, spicy. Listen, my my one line relationship advice to guys was always: it doesn't matter how you look, as long as you can make them laugh, right, Suk? I always said if a guy oh, can make a woman laugh and keep her laughing and good humor, it will make you, regardless of your of your appearance. You know, <laughs> granted, if you're a great looking guy and you're funny, you know, like me, it 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 works. You know, um, if you could <laughs> sing, it's even a bonus. But, um, <laughs> But no, but I, I always say that it does it does it. You just you gotta if, especially on the initial dates, the initial contact, if you could be humorous and make somebody laugh and smile, you're in. So and that's important. basic, right? It, and it makes for women, I know it makes guys more attractive when they're oh fun. Yeah. Right? yeah. I, I always say like a man must be attracted to a woman in order to fall in love. But a woman can fall in love with a man. And he becomes more attractive the more that he loves on her. So right. like the more that he's like right. cherishing her and the way that he treats her, he becomes more lovable and attractive to her. Whereas like right. men have to be attracted to you in order yeah. to like or be open to the love. They're more visceral. But, yeah, they're more visceral. We need in that, that, we need in that feel, sense. Yeah, we need to experience them. We need to experience like a man's energy, his humor, like Scott said. And that will you know open our hearts more, which is why the in-person communication is so important. And that like, you know, being able to like reach out and touch someone, giving affection, meeting in person. I don't I don't encourage us to stay on dating apps and like websites for too long. I want it to go from um, initial communication on there to funnel, date. exchanging contact, like personal cell phone information yeah. to a FaceTime to a date. I say FaceTime first or like a Zoom call first so that that way you feel safe and comfortable and you don't get all dressed up for like a catfish. So, oh God. Oh God. <laughs> Irene Fitzhugh has a good question. Men her age uh, want younger women, even if they like talking to me. So how does she deal with something like that? So there is going to be, I mean, the, t since the beginning of time, um, younger women have been uh, more desirable and attractive to men. I'm not going to lie to you guys and tell you like, that's a myth. What I am going to tell you though, is that who gives a care and we're going to not go after those men. We're going to move on to the next person until we find someone who is appreciative of all of our wisdom and our age that we have to offer and everything that has come with our beautiful life that we've lived because it really is about putting yourself out there. So we're not going to focus on the ones who don't want us. Great. We don't want the ones who don't want us either. They don't have good taste if they don't want us. Mm -hmm. So I don't trust their judgment. <laughs> we move on to the next <laughs> and we will find that person but we have to keep opening that door. And if we get stuck behind door number three with the person who's chasing after a younger woman or who's not, you know, attracted to us, then you know, we're trapped in the cycle and we don't get to door number 20 where our dream guy is behind or the person who we live along with. I call him our purpose mate. So we got to keep going. It's a numbers game. You know yeah, what I found when I, I was like in a very serious relationship, broke up, and then you know, it was like five years of just like being, you know, the moment I gave up was the moment he showed up. Like, you know what I mean? The moment I gave up, like having my like expectations and what I think and dating and going out, blah, blah, yeah. the moment I just decided to have fun with myself, like my friends, yeah. my life, happy Suki, just, just keep, they show up. They, it's yeah. like, it's like a yeah. magnet. All Suk, of a sudden, how, many, like, how many times do I have to apologize for that? It was years ago. You're never going to let me forget. <laughs> <laughs> But you know what I'm saying? Like, it's just, it's just it's incredible. Right? And That's I think true. that people just have to realize the moment, like you start, like, just, just being okay with yourself. Well, I think we're going to like raise that to a higher <laughs> and say, because what I tell everyone is that you should be madly in love with yourself. Because if you're not madly in love with yourself and you, the expectation is that someone else is supposed to be. Yeah. How are we going to attract a mate? And so law of attraction requires you to be absolutely in love with the thing that you're trying to attract. So yeah. we need to fall back in love with men, back in love with the male species or back in love with the female species if we're a guy and fall most importantly back in love with ourselves so yeah. that we can attract that person who's supposed to be in love with us. But yeah. oftentimes we're too focused on like just trying to get the person that we forget about us. Have, Easy uh, breezy. Have, have, yeah. you guys, have you guys seen that series on Netflix, Sex Life? Oh my God. I have saw you watch that? Soft porn, soft porn. It is, it's like soft porn. <laughs> She, and but you know what the funny thing is, I realized because my wife was watching it and I would watch some some episodes with her. I'm like, Jesus, Christmas this is unbelievable. 
Um, it's the show about where the woman's married to a very good looking, successful guy, but she can't yeah. stop thinking about the old boyfriend who had in, she had insane sex with. Uh, which, by the way, those two are together in real life. I don't know if you know that. Oh, her and the boyfriend, um, or her the, and the her, husband? No, her and the boyfriend are her like oh, wow. it, they are like in love in real life. They're always together. I saw on their Instagram pages. Um, I heard in real life she really left her previous husband for him. Is that yeah, true? I, I, it may be. But, <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Because isn't it? It's kind of a true story. Yeah, what I think so. <laughs> but but it's just it it's just it's wild, and I know like more more women than men are watching that series because it's yeah. like it's just like steamy and you guys love stuff like that right yeah it's pretty hot and steamy yeah, <laughs> yeah i'm telling yeah. you i think women like romance right women like that women like to be turned on i don't think men's you know it's like spend enough time you know it it, it takes us like a little bit to get mm -hmm. get there you know what i mean i think men are there as they walk in the door. <laughs> yeah, and like the premise of the show was that she was missing passion in the relationship. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was giving her passion. He provided security, but he wasn't giving passion. And, and then so he, right. That passion, we're going to go after and try to find it. And so she was like in pursuit of this passion <laughs> and returned to exes. Yeah, and he was, he was, he read her diary, he was trying to keep up with what the other boyfriend she was writing about the you old sex watch life. It, you gotta watch it. Yeah, Suits, you gotta, you gotta watch that thing. Eric, you know, Eric might get a little lucky after watching that. A couple <laughs> lucky nights. enough, thank you. <laughs> Spicy, listen, um, where can, you where know what can Jordan Gray said? What's I'm attracted right? to whiskey and bad decisions. Bad decisions. Sometimes, those, sometimes those bad decisions become good decisions. <laughs> great stories. They always make for great stories. <laughs> Spicy, how can, how can our audience? audience get use your advice use your get to your website you know use your services tell us absolutely you guys can always i say play with my twitter or stroke my ig at spicy Madi. you can go to the spicy um you can get uh, a cook and subscribe also to my podcast the spicy life um i also give relationship advice on there but if you are in need of relationship coaching and magnetic matchmaking the spicy life.com is where you want to go and schedule a free consultation Love it. I love it. Listen, love it, thank you so Maddie. much for coming on. I know you, you, thank do, you. you do celebrity advice and all kinds of stuff. Yeah. Um, and congratulations on the baby. Good luck. When are you, when are you due? September 1st. September 1st. Oh, all right. Virgo. Well, it's like a Leo and a Virgo all together. You got I it. Know. I'm hoping he's going to be a Leo, though. I'm like, come by the 21st <laughs> <Nice. laughs> of August. <laughs> my, birthday's, my birthday's on the August 30th, so God willing, he'll oh, be born okay. on the 30th birth instead. Okay. <laughs> you birthday twins. Yeah, yeah, I'll yeah. Let you know. I'll let you know. <laughs> but uh, Spicy, thank you so much. Just an absolute pleasure. And, um, thank you for having me. Uh, Bye, Spicy Mati. You look great. One more time. What's the site? TheSpicyLife.com. SpicyLife.com. The Spicy Life. The Spicy Life. That's how we have to end it. Yeah, that's a great, <laughs> I, I love that jingle. Thank uh, you, guys. Have a great summer, sweetie. All right. so Appreciate much. you. You too. Bye-bye. Bye. All right. Sizzle and spice it up Suk, this summer. Suk, what'd you learn? What'd you learn? Anything? I, huh? So many things. It's, the same, gonna... it's, it's like, it's the iteration that you have to, you have to like really be confident in who you are and like, yeah. And be happy. You only get That's one go it. around at this. So you got to just sort of figure it out and let's keep it moving. That's it. And, and she's right. You can't spend hours on social media. Like you could spend hours like figuring it out and you'll never figure it out. Exactly. Exactly. Listen, it's a numbers game too, right? You got to meet as many mm -hmm. people and then, you know, hopefully one of them sticks. Suk, listen, we still have a lot more show to go. Uh, Constantine Maroulis, our guy, our buddy, our pals coming up in just a second. Um, John Poveromo's coming up uh, in just of, uh, a little bit. He's got some crazy things to talk about. One of the hottest uh, comedians in the country. He's a, he's a writer. He's an actor. He's got all kinds of things going on. He's got really good friggin' hair, too. Um, so he's coming up, John. And uh, But listen, Constantine, right? He's got a show on WABC Radio here in New York. Crazy. Uh, and, and also on their website across the country, because Saturday night, Suk, on WABC, you know, you got Cousin Brucey they brought back with, like, his dance party. Our guy, Tony Orlando, they they brought in. He's a little later in the in the night. And now they brought in Constantine, who you know is, you know, American Idol, huge in Rock of Ages, one of my favorite Broadway shows. Here's a little uh, commercial for the show. We'll bring him in on the other side. Watch. 
What's going down, Broadway? It's your boy, Constantine Maroulis here. That's right, my brand new show debuts this Saturday, July 10th, because Saturday night rocks. 5 p.m. Eastern to 6 p.m. Eastern, taking you all the way up to Cousin Brucey himself. So check it out. We love you. Only on Music Radio 77 WABC New York. Let's go. Yeah. Is there, you, dude, is there, anything, <laughs> is there anything you don't do, man? Is there anything you don't do? Listen, man, I like, I'm a hustler, baby. I'm a hustler, baby. <laughs> You're a hustler, baby. And, uh, just got to keep it rolling, keep it rocking. And so blessed to be on the big mic, um, you know, Music Radio 77, WABC. I grew up with WABC. Me too, yeah, yeah. You know, my father used to you know, have Bob Branch playing on in, in the in the garage, you know, uh, that guy would talk all day long and then pop radio. So, so blessed to be there. First of all, Suki, I haven't even seen you in how long? I mean, in the last few times I've done the show, you've been, you know, doing yeah. some other stuff. I don't I've know. Been you know I've been like, MIA. Very busy, uh, very busy, Suki. Am I very busy, very busy doing stuff. It's all good. Um, great to see you both. But it's good to see you. I am so excited. No, we love so it. I need to know about the show. What are we going to get from Constantine on this show? What are we talking about? Okay. There you go. There well, it is, you're right going to get you're going to get a little of everything. Certainly, lots of personality, a lot of fun, rock and roll. Um, in, in the coming weeks, we're going to go longer form as well and we're going to be simulcasting the show going to be doing um vlogs and doing podcasts we got great guests lined up in studio performances from you know everyone from like david bryan from bon jovi broadway stars you know broadway's back now we got a lot to do we're working on yeah. so many big names we got you know d snyder we got jerry springer lined up we got Little Steven, my buddy Ryan Cabrera, you know, wrestling awesome. stars, sports stars, a lot of fun stuff in the works. But the show, 5 to 6 p.m. Uh, Eastern, of course, uh, you can hear it live right there on, on Music Radio 77 WABC. It's uh, each week has a bit of a theme. I mean, everything is sort of rooted in the 70s and 80s and 90s landscape or soundscape of my of my youth. Um this coming week, we're focusing on the 80s, so a lot of that sort of great pop that I grew up with from Madonna, Billy Joel, you oh know, my God, early the U2, the such good stuff. We got great, great callers uh, coming in. The fans get to be a part of the show with karaoke with Constantine. Uh, oh, your chance. dude, you got to get us in there. You got to get us in there. Bro, you got to get us in there. What are you doing? Please. Come on by. We love that. And, uh, you know, a fan gets a chance to either come in studio or do it on the phone to, like, trade verses with me on a song like, you know, maybe something from Journey. Um, you know, Don't Stop Believing, of course, is a real go-to. And, you know, we have some fun moments like the Stonewashed benchmark moment. Stonewash moment is sort of like that throwback, classic rock, kind of dazed and confused, you know. You know, musical moment of the day. Last it, week we had Fog Hat with with slow slow ride. Love so fog. That was Take really it fun. easy. We yeah, yeah, opened the show with poison. <laughs> yeah, man. that is great, man. Oh, I they love it. They just don't you make know, songs like that anymore. Nah, so man, it's, it's been a lot of fun. And you, speaking of journey, you are you're part of a journey tribute band too now, right? Man, you know, in fact. New Jersey, you, this is a rare opportunity to see this act. I signed on with this act, Foreigner's Journey, a few weeks ago, really a couple of months ago. They're doing like major Live Nation shows. They got a huge agency. They're selling out theater shows and music halls and auditoriums all throughout New England. I'm getting them a little closer to home, New York, New Jersey, whatnot. <laughs> uh, we're playing a sold out show Friday night in Boston at the Blue Ocean Music Hall. Um, but I think there's some standing room that you might be able to check out if uh, anyone is in Boston. But Saturday night, we just picked up a free concert in Lindhurst, New Jersey. Wow, At really? the big municipal Memorial Park field. Free Saturday night rock and roll concert. Me, Whoa. Farner's Journey, all the hits from Farner and Journey, a, a big Rock of Ages type of night. I'm bringing the whole band down. There's a great opener, I forget. Um, what their name is, but they're so cool. They're, you know, they're playing like 70s hits themselves. 
So this Saturday night, yeah, nine o'clock will hit. It's a free show in the park. So I might have um, to come check that out, I'll, man. Dude, you really should. I mean, yeah. this band slays, you know, and it's like and it's free. I mean, like mixed. I can bring a blanket, hang out, listen to you, like <laughs> exactly, exactly, I exactly. Love it. Rain or shine. Um, I think there's a big band shell there, so we're gonna be there. Um, rain or shine, Saturday night. I think the show starts at like seven thirty. You know, there's a first show, and we'll come on like just before nine, probably. Um, I'll do a meet and greet. I got a big merchandise booth. I'll be hanging, selling a new uh, album, you know, too, and just meeting everybody. So <laughs> I didn't cut my hair, I promise. I'm just, I was at the gym. I was going to say, did you cut your out, hair? You know? And uh, yeah, dude, you know what? I actually, I saw that on your Instagram. I was going to grab that picture of you holding the weights. And <laughs> there I, was no weights on it. It's just I, a bar. I'm like, I don't know. His legs are skinnier than mine. I don't know if I want to. Uh, <laughs> embarrass them like that but oh my um god dude i skipped i skip i'm skipping leg day i'm yeah oh me too bro for the game me too yeah <laughs> no, no, there's I, no there's no leg <laughs> <laughs> listen i found i found a video uh from a song called try that you put out right recently okay um yeah i want to play a little I of did. that's from the new album yeah i really like it so please take, do. take a listen this one's off the new album and uh, it's really good listen i'm not ever You've got that quintessential 80s hair yeah, band rock voice. And roll. <laughs> it's perfect. <laughs> I love it, man. It's Fake good. it till you make it, baby. You know? Yeah. Tell so really us about that song a little we bit. We shot that in the middle. Well, we shot the video in the middle of the shutdown. Actually, I have some dear friends, uh, label mates of mine, Hey Monet. Dan yeah, we Nate. know those guys. Hey, Monet. Right, you guys know them. Yeah, so Love they, they pro guys. produced the song on the album. They're from Canton, Ohio. Yeah. Um, we've gone on service missions to Guatemala together. Sean McCardle, a great comic book writer and director um, of short form sort of media. Um, he's worked on some features and stuff. He's like, I want to direct this music video. He's like, I can do it in like two days. I know I can. We did it with no money. We got like everyone to help out we shot it at the gorgeous hundred year old palace theater in downtown canton ohio i drove wow. out there in the middle of the shutdown um we knocked it out in like a day and a half the song i wrote with ryan star ryan star was on um rock star supernova mark brunette show many years ago yes, an amazing yes. singer songwriter from new york and and one of the most gifted singers and, and songwriters. We wrote that song in like a 45 minute session together a few years ago. It's sort of about being young fathers at the time in tumultuous relationships and, you know, sometimes just, um, you know, just missing each other and that communication and, and maybe just, you know, maybe just trying to, you know, like like your friend earlier said, spicy there. <laughs> um, you know, we do, we have this one one time around, man. One time around the, the big clock, and That's sometimes it. you know the grass the grass isn't greener. You know, sometimes it's 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 best to try to work through those um, those tough times and maybe give it one more try. You know, so it's a little bit about that. And the video has some kind of ripped from the headlines. You know, I might have dealt with a little drama uh, in the past with my uh, daughter's mom. So there's a little of that. You can check it out on my YouTube channel, Constantine Marulis TV. And you can see the whole video in its entirety. And uh, I'm a little, I'm a little fat in that picture. 
uh, in that video there, but it's very real. I love. You that. see me getting out of bed, and it's like, <laughs> like just, I love but it. it's. <laughs> it's like I had the COVID nineteen for sure. COVID nineteen blues. <laughs> there you go. God. Uh, listen, but, Constantine. You know, just, just hustling, man. Yeah, no. Listen, man. It, it, it's great. Now you got this radio show every Saturday on WABC. Uh, and again, for folks who are out of New York, um, it's you know the WABC website. You can listen to it anywhere. Uh, yeah. And you're on. You know, but yeah. between, listen, you to Tony Orlando, cousin Brucey. Now that's a pretty good lineup. <laughs> For a uh, little fifty thousand AM station yeah. in New York, yeah, small station, yeah. It, um, <laughs> honestly, uh, just legendary call call letters. So excited to be a part of that. Tony and cousin Brucey have been amazing. Joe Piscopo has been great. The Captain Matidi's family, John and Margot, of course, yeah, yeah. are you know dear friends that we've done so much philanthropic work together and over the years tomorrow night i'm actually singing at the brooklyn cyclones game oh, nice. um, wow. they're doing a bunch of stuff in coney island with, yeah with their with their business mamamides an amazing hospital now has the naming rights of the the cyclone stadium yeah. and just what they're doing for for children and and the people of brooklyn you know i was born there so I'm um, just so grateful uh, to be a part of that family. And yeah, so I'll rock it out. Coney Island, if you haven't been in a while, you got to so check good. it out. It's yeah. just, it's so fun. And Little also, Nathan's so, action. Um, come on, the ride. <laughs> in Atlantic City, I just did the Miss uh, America, Miss New Jersey contest a couple of weeks ago down there. I had the best time in Atlantic City. I'm playing a bunch down there this summer. All the concert dates are at ConstantineMaroulis.com. Come out, support live music. I hope to see you this Saturday night. I hope Dude, you listen, check if out I, the radio show. If I, I hope come, we can do this I come, in person sometime yeah, soon. Absolutely, man. We'll be back in a studio soon. And if I come to Lyndhurst on Saturday, if I'm with my wife and some friends, dude, just pretend like you know I'm a big deal. Make me look good, like I know a, a, <laughs> a, a, a rock star. Just make me look good, all right? He needs the VIP treatment. Yeah, yeah. Give me a little VIP. Oh my God, me. I can't. I can't believe this guy's here to see us tonight. You know, give me a little of that. Um, yeah, I got you. I, um, for sure. Um, uh, you know, I, I, I would love to see you there, have your support. Um, and we're really excited, man. Foreigner's Journey. I'm out with Constantine and the Frequency all summer. And, uh, you know, Broadway's coming back. So we got a lot of pop culture moments in the in the radio show. And we're bringing a lot of fun entertainment news as well. So definitely tune in. Beautiful. beautiful. So I'm curious, was was radio on your, like, kind of your, like, your list of things to, like, do, Constantine, growing up? Or... Or you're just like, wow, man, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be on the radio. I got my own show. This is like a, <laughs> this is like a weird pinch me moment. Well, all of those things definitely pinch me moment. But yes, you know, I, music is my life. But I don't listen to music in the car. I really listen to radio. I've, I grew up with talk radio. Like I said, I grew up with WABC, and this is no, no jazz. I, I grew up with the talk radio in the house. My parents always had it on in the kitchen. That white noise, AM radio, I, 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 I it calms me. I listen to radio, NPR. Yep. Yeah. I just, just what I love, you know? And I get so much music in my life that I love to tune into that. So I've sort of studied it. And of course, I've contributed to like, you know, a couple hundred hours of radio over 20, you know, uh, probably some not so great moments either. But, yeah, so it feels natural, and if you're doing it, but it's like I've wanted this my whole life, and here we are. Look, I got three months to show them what I can do. I hope that um, you know, and I think it's brought a lot of excitement to the station. You know, they're trying to. They've obviously leaned into that conservative talk thing for many years, and it's back towards the middle and get hip with. I think I'm their guy. Beautiful. I think you're their guy. Yeah, listen, Definitely. man. Congratulations! It's the Constantine Marulis show. Because Saturday night rocks, Saturdays from 5 to 6. And uh, we'll be listening, my friend. Congratulations, Bo. sure with something else big that comes It's like the Bay life. City Rollers. S-A <laughs> night. And I dance with my baby till the heart and soul. Man, that might be a great. That's a great. I might add yeah, that to the it, it is. We got some fun shows coming up. Definitely. Like we're each each show has a different theme, like Yacht Rock and Cinema. And I love and, Yacht Rock. You know, all kinds of one hit wonders <laughs> and stuff. 
Yacht Rock yeah, Radio. Man. Very cool. So tune in. Constantine, thanks you, but uh, thank you, my man. Continued success. Rock. We love you, All Constantine. Right, thank you so much. Love you. Thank you so much. Be for on the, the radio, support. pal. All right. Good guy, Sue. Such a good guy. I love special. Uh, listen, I got it. You know, I don't know if you ever saw Animal House, but when they go into an Otis day and the knights are playing and they're like, yo, Otis. And they're like, and they're like <laughs> yo, Otis, he loves us. And then the, the record scratches. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to be like, yo, Constantine, it's me, buddy. He's going to continue to roll along. Our next guest is in the green room, John Paul Barone. Uh, he's got some, he just broke a, a Guinness record. We're going to talk about that in a second, but here he is on Sorry Guy with his shirt. Take a look. We'll bring him in on the other side. Doesn't seem like, like that's not your shirt, sir. You admit that, like, that's a married man. Like, she, you didn't buy that. That she gave it to you. <laughs> not half your shirt. You can have shirts with shit on them. That's not like nasty in that just fun generic blue <laughs> mouse trap of a shirt. <laughs> and that's what marriage, marriage to me is just your... You don't know where you got it, you don't know how long you've had it, but it doesn't, it doesn't even quite fit anymore, but you're like, it's the only nice shirt you own. <laughs> like wear it, like, this collar tight? I can't breathe. This is always there. <laughs> That's a nice shirt, man. You did a good job. Here he is, John hey. B. How John, are you? How, how are you, buddy? I'm doing good, guys. How are you? Oh, we're doing hey. good, man. You got, you know what? You, I look at you, I love it. <laughs> That Alpha Thank you. 70s Serpico look. I'm yeah, there. man. I know. I, that's the nicest thing anybody said about this look. <laughs> I've been I've been kind of describing it as like the dude who gave Jenny AIDS and Forrest Gump. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> if I have the right coat on and it's a little messed up, yeah. I think that's a lot that's better. That's funny. Yeah, the boyfriend from Oregon, <laughs> the dude who gave Jenny AIDS. You put that underneath your, uh, your, right? your Chiron, your Chiron it's on the bottom. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I feel like that's not too bad. He had born in Mamadi's hospital. Oh, oh no, he, I don't know. Did he say he was born there? I know they were doing something with the Brooklyn Cyclones. I'm I, hoping. I'm I don't know. Thing. Yeah, but Mamadi's in the little bassinet. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Why not? Somebody, <laughs> fit, somebody John. else. You know? <laughs> yeah, we both got good hair from Mamadi's, and then we moved on. <laughs> oh, man, it's so funny. But I feel like that should be a good bonding experience. That's great, man. Listen, at the beginning of the show, I was telling Sue had broken this Guinness record for the longest comedy streaming show of all yeah. time tell me about yeah. it 93 hours wow. um i'm still reeling from it uh so um no but it was it was it was really a, a beautiful thing because uh me and a bunch of other friends um got together uh and one of the guys that um uh this guy his name is tom ben, of the show that i do now called dystopia tonight but okay. we still never met in person we met over quarantine and uh on the internet as you do um and uh it's a dating website <laughs> um, but, uh, we, uh, we wound up, we wound up meeting and he did live events, um, before the pandemic hit. And, uh, as comedians, you know, we all perform live and stuff like that. And we also tend to do charity events, but because the live event situation had closed down and the charity events couldn't happen and yeah. comedians couldn't perform, um, he had an idea to come together and basically do like, look, like I, I work with this, uh, um, organization called star treatments. Um, and which is, is, uh, the basis in pop evil and, um, who, yeah. um, basically what it is, is it, they, they get to travel from to and from their treatments, the rock star. So they get wow. a, a touring van and it's all kids stuff. It's filled with candy. They, you know, oh, they make a great. big deal out of it. Um, and it's beautiful. So for them and in the process, try to break a world record for the longest co streaming comedy event. Um, and then I wound up co-producing it with Mark Riccadonna um richie byrne and a couple other friends and we just made phone calls i mean i made so many calls to a-list comics that i know who were more than happy to jump on board that's and great. it wound up being over 300 comedians 93 hours and it was like the biggest backstage we could ever imagine it was it was amazing for the charity and it was also amazing because none of us could perform all over the country people were hanging out way longer than they should have been like people would come on during their time and then leave but because everybody had access to the stream yard live link yeah yeah friends everybody were just popping, popping in years and it was truly like cathartic we all needed it and it was a lot Jesus. of fun 93 yeah. yeah suki and i are exhausted after an hour of this show every night <laughs> we 93. were there's a couple of video clips of me during that whole thing where like uh, one of my friends was like why and then i like looked later and i'm like literally weaving like a boxer in my chair just like trying to stay awake 
I think we've done like, I don't know, what's the longest you've been on TV for? Like 15, 16 hours straight? Like, yeah, I don't know, it's breaking news or something, but it was right. like, yeah, like We've been on hours. TV like many, many hours. Many, but, many yeah. hours talking, you're talking, talking, you're, talking. You're talking about um, four, four days here. Right? Yes, we did four days. I was, uh, I think. unheard of. A couple of us were, because Mark and I and Richie were like primarily the hosts of that thing. So we tried to make sure we were on no matter what. What and the hell were you on? Like, were you on oh, Red Bull? <laughs> I don't. <laughs> yeah, there was a. I mean, it was just coffee and energy drinks. Yeah, and, I was going to uh, say a lot of it. <laughs> yeah, and just sheer will. And uh, we were also doing all the background stuff too. So, like, you know, people were having trouble logging on. We're like texting in the background or whatever. And uh, I, I was up for a, like a day and a half at one point, like twenty four hours, because. Not only that, you're like, you didn't want to sleep because you didn't want to miss the comics that were coming on. Yeah. So yeah. we had like yeah. such good guests that we were like, well, I don't want to go to bed now. I'm just going <laughs> to, I'm just going to hang out. <laughs> and John, listen, you have, um, you, you produce this short film called Dup It, mm -hmm. uh, Depression and yes. Puppets, um, mm -hmm. which was, which, which was kind of cool. I took a little clip from it. I want to, and then we'll, uh, we'll talk about it on the other side. Your, your puppet's kind of like a pain in the ass friend of yours, right? It yes. just keeps eating this soup. Watch. Hey, you're almost out of money. Hey, buddy. So you put almond milk in your cereal. You know, it's not any healthier, right? It's just pretentious water you're drinking. What, are you ignoring me? Hey, come on! Oh, oh, here we go. Hey, you can't run from all your problems. Oh man, this is my time. Oh, why can't I join my buddy on this morning run? Or walk? Hey, nope. let's just walk. Nope. Honestly, I'm surprised you can run like this, ignoring everything going on in your life. Dating one of your best friends, not screwing it up then. What are you doing? Now you have no girlfriend, what are you doing? and now your life is just oh, over. You don't know that. Don't know that it's over? She hasn't spoken to you in weeks. Okay, it's you know over. What? This is why. I can't run with you, okay? Because I was doing fine. No, you weren't. Oh, I told you to fucking stop, but you did it anyway. I guess we're walking back. Hey, why don't we get some smokes on the way no, back? No, I don't fuck smoke. Not yet, but you will. <laughs> <laughs> it's like the, uh, yeah, it's like the little devil over your shoulder, right? Yeah, yeah it was, um, it was interesting. It was something I had worked on, um, a few years before we actually put it out where my friend had, uh, had a roommate that I was living with for a while and we had both dealt with depression in different ways. And we were just talking about how basically it's like living with a, just a bad roommate that is always there and constantly putting you down and reminding you of all the terrible stuff that you're trying to avoid. And, um, and then a couple of years went by and I pitched it to a writing partner of mine. I was like, why don't we work on it together? Cause I had I'd been out in LA and I had a bunch of contacts and pitch meetings and stuff. And uh, we were like, all right, cool. So we wrote this script and uh, we're such huge fans of uh, the Muppets and Jim Henson that we just decided to make the dude a puppet that manifests the guy's depression. <laughs> just decided to call it Duppet, which is just a Duppet. Do okay, got it. It's long, right? It's about a 10 Yeah, minute. we did. Yeah, we decided. So it was part of a, um, one, one of my friends had, had done putting together a movie a month, a part of it. And basically I'd already had this script. It was our first one. We filmed it in like, three weeks because we, we which made a deadline for the whole or for ourselves that every at the end of every month we had to put something out. So this came together super quick um, and uh, it wound up getting a lot of attention and Jim Henson's company saw it, liked it and I had a meeting with them to make it into a series and then of course That's COVID awesome. hit. So. You know what remind me of that damn film with that bear? What is that? That bear. The bear. That crazy bear, the bad bear that used to curse. The oh, puppet. oh, Ted. Ted, oh, yes. Ted. Oh, the movie, yeah. <laughs> With Mark Wahlberg. I love Ted. Mark Wahlberg. Yeah. That's <laughs> a so great movie. It reminds me of Ted. I feel like it could oh, go there. I never even thought of that. That's beautiful. I'll take it. I'll take some Ted money. <laughs> <laughs> Get Seth MacFarlane involved. You guys know the him. Bad bear. Yeah, yeah, Seth. Right? <laughs> yes. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Um, and listen, you've listen, you've had a, a fairly decent career. I mean, you've been you've done stuff with Fallon and Drew Carey. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, you, you and also, you know, I was looking at your stuff, and you actually have some fantastic 
uh, cartoon drawings that you do. Thank you. Um, you actually have a book out, right, called I Drawings, do. drawings, drawings from, from a Nobody. There you oh, go. Wow. There you go. Yeah. Oh, wait, wait, first... John. John, listen. Let me let me give you a better plug than that. Oh, you thank go. you. That is so sweet. I love that. <laughs> I look you, at just, you guys are on top of stuff. You uh, you basically. I mean, if you look at some of the stuff you, this is from you, right? Yes. Oh, um, uh, yeah. That one got really popular. What are you? What are you? What are you drawing about here? You got Instagram likes and Facebook oh, off this. in the back. What What are we saying in this shot? So basically, I, I drew this because I felt like that's something that we all kind of cling, like we we're drowning trying to get uh, acceptance and <laughs> approval and likes and basically uh, clinging on to Facebook and Instagram and social media um, for, you know, attention. And that's the and, and look at that. The water is rough. The dude is right. just, <laughs> you know. <laughs> Hanging on for dear life, hoping to get yeah. some attention from uh, people he doesn't need it from. Oh my I mean, goodness. that that is so t that 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 is our lives right now with oh, that yeah. stupid it's, thing, isn't it? It's so it's so brutal and so like ridiculous, homogenous. You know what I mean? It's like everybody has the same take on the same. Like we're all like. Here's the thing: it, it, what happens is we all have our own followers, and everybody is hoping to be the first to get a take on something and hoping that their followers see it before anybody else does. Right, right, right. <laughs> and it's, but it makes it, I feel like it makes us less creative in a way because it's like, what's trending? What can I say about it? And you all wind up like, you know, it's one of those things where we all wind up saying the same thing. But right. you know, if, if I say something and come up with a thing and then somebody else does who has a million something followers, they're going to see it first. Right. It's and then it just looks like, it looks like I'm some hack. You know, <laughs> so I try to, it's just, it, it becomes, uh, you know, annoying, but it, it is, it's the culture that yeah. we're in. And it's like, if, if you see a post and you, but boy, you know what? I have a response, but it came to me too quickly. That means 20 yes. other people probably wrote the same response. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. No, that came and to I me wish they would just, quick. yeah, I wish they would just do away with all the likes and stuff like that, because it really, I think we would all be better off if we didn't, you know, know how many other likes somebody else is getting for something. And we just kind of enjoy people's content on the merit of it yeah. and, and, and realize it's just content it is it is just content. Just curated content yeah, yeah. And, and after a while it's very performant like even like you know even during the pandemic and stuff you know i'm like a, I'm, I'm a pretty active political guy and and all that other stuff but then i just see these other pages that are like curating content and then selling it on a t-shirt later and i'm like you don't care <laughs> <laughs> this is a scam but you know it's a it's a bummer sometimes. Do you do do you do a lot of political stuff in, in your stand up act or? Uh... I don't really. Um, I, th I it's weird because I feel like uh, it seems like I do because I'm very active. I, I do love politics. I love um, going on political shows. I I'm not shy about my opinions or anything like that. But when I do do stand up, it's basically a mix of of everything. You know, I do do some social commentary in there, but it's not heavily politically driven. It's just if that's what's going on that's what i'll talk about but it won't be for the full hour it'll be like a, a small chunk of it or whatever yeah. and um it's funny because i feel like that's the stuff that winds up getting attention anyway though so like Always, i yeah. could be talking about a million things and the thing that'll <laughs> get the most attention is like did you hear what he said about crying out and you're just like oh god here's uh <laughs> here's one of your cartoons also social media related which is mm. so true uh right? <laughs> honey come quick i think the baby's about to say his first words uh. Um, and then the three dots. Um, yeah. Oh wait, there was. I, did I not take the other one? You. But have, you know what's oh, so. You know what's so funny, John? I think our kids, because my kids are like this. They don't want to be on on camera. They don't want to be on your social media feeds. They want to have their own. They do not. Yes. Want it's it, it's interesting how my my little ones probably won't have that big of a you know a profile or like a footprint like we do. Right. I know. It is kind of interesting when you think about it, because the Internet's only like, what, 40 years old. So it's still yeah. relatively new and we're still all kind of learning and reeling from uh, its effect on us as a society. But it is kind of funny because I, I know like the younger generation and I have nieces and nephews and stuff like that. I feel like you're absolutely right. They're not going to care. That's not because they grow up with it and we are the ones who used it. It's going to be lame which I'm thankful for. I can't I can't wait until people just start ignoring social media altogether. Yeah, yeah. That's I would. So I hope it's all retro. I've got a record player. I never had one of those I before. Retro. You know? Let's go back. Yeah. Let's I can't back. wait till they, they start bringing out TVs with only three channels. And they're like, yeah, yeah. look at this. I'm like, and, I, and you got to stand up to change them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Damn, That's I how they're gonna get, get their now. exercise. 
<laughs> I think there's a Wii game out that's like that. What that you have to uh, change the channel? That's it. This channel. Is for, it's a part of a workout program on uh, <laughs> Nintendo Switch. Shitty show comes on. Damn, I gotta change the channel. <laughs> Damn, I gotta change the channel. That's not a bad app, dude. Something, <laughs> something just you hate automatically comes on. You're like, oh, no, I gotta get up. Jesus Christ! <laughs> right? How'd you lose all that weight, Bob? Yeah. Well, <laughs> watch a TV. The view kept coming on, and I couldn't yeah. stand the sound of. Uh, Oh, yeah. it's so funny. John, yeah. so you got uh, you got a couple of um, appearances coming up, I think, right? I do, yeah. I'm super excited about it because now, uh, you know, everything's kind of opening back up. And um, one of the shows I've got going on that I'm excited about is uh, a local show at a place called Bird and Betty's. Um, and uh, I haven't done this place yet, but I hear it's a blast. It's going to be super fun. Um, Joanne Filan is going to be there with me uh, opening up the show. She's always on the road with me whenever I'm touring. So uh, it's been a while since she and I have been together. Um, and another buddy of mine, uh, Vinny Nardiello, who actually wrote Dump It with me is emceeing. So it's it's gonna be just a blast to be on stage together. Um, and then I have another one coming up uh, in August uh, at Jenkinson's, which is oh, so, so much fun. Yeah, yeah. man. Um, I remember the first time, uh, my first concert at Jenkinson's was seeing the Gin Blossom. So to be able to share that stage just with, I love the Gin Blossoms. So huge Gin Blossoms fan, <laughs> 90s music all the way. Um, but uh, yeah, they're, uh, they're excited. Right? I know. It's, what's it your, what's your favorite, favorite Gin Blossom song? Ooh, I think it has to be Hate Jealousy, even though there's a, there's a, there's a, it's a, Jealousy. oh man, that one gets me going. That one, no matter what I'm doing, if I'm driving and I'm doing like 50, I hear that song, I'm easily doing 85. <laughs> like, <laughs> like uh, but yeah, that's a great song. That's so funny. Yeah, those are the only words from that's hey jealousy. That's yeah, the, those are the only Allison words. Road is another good one though. Um, uh, God, I'm trying to think of the other ones that are so good. Jan, uh, you know, there's, a, there's just a bunch. There's so many that I love. Beautiful, John. Listen, man, it's a pleasure having you on. Listen, I want everybody to go out and get this drawings from a nobody. Uh, mm -hmm. It's got some great cartoons, some great work in it. Thank and also, you. Oh, uh, check out Duppet, which is. Yes, and uh, I'll also be at Nowhere Comedy Club, which is an internet, sorry, a Zoom show um, on July 31st. What, how do the people month. get on that? How do they get on that one? There's a, there's a website, there's a link you can go to. Um, you can also go to nowherecomedyclub.com Nowhere and purchase Comedy. tickets. Okay. Yes. Great. John, listen, man, continued success and uh, keep Thanks, it man. coming, bud. Keep going, man. Yeah, appreciate it, guys. Thanks for having me on. You guys are a blast. Thank you, my friend. Thanks for coming. Take care. Peace. All right, Bye. bud. Funny guy, Sook. Very wow, cool. He's super talented. I mean, like very cool. <laughs> hey, Wait, did Phil. You say, did you hey, say hey, super talented. Hey, man. I got to tell you, I was uh, I was motivated by uh, by John's uh, Duppet thing. So uh, I kind of got uh, <laughs> <laughs> a little thing of my own here. Hey, hey, Henry. Uh, are you excited about being on the uh, uh, you know Suki and Scott show? <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, are are you going to sing a song with me? Oh, <laughs> Phil, who knew uh, he was such a good ventriloquist? That's amazing. I know. All right, buddy. We'll see you later, Henry. Take care, man. Uh, uh, shout out to my grandson for leaving that in my uh, man cave. <laughs> How you guys doing, man? I missed you guys. I missed you. Philly oh, kid, we missed you. I know our audience missed you singing. You and I put up some some things while we were away, got some yeah. you know, critical acclaim. Some so some songs did, some songs not so much, but uh, <laughs> it was uh, all good. It was all good. We're back in action. The train continues to roll and steam down that hill, my friend. Chugging along, chugging along. Suki, how you been? Good. Did you have a good break there, Phil? Oh, my gosh. Wonderful. It was good, right? It was really good. Yeah, we took we took several road trips, you know, just yeah, right so around we Right around here in the state, and uh, saw a lot of uh, saw a lot of things, uh, and uh, you know, just visited some of the interesting places in Oklahoma, and uh, had a good time. Had a good time. Yeah, love it, no. love it. We need, we all great. needed to do that. Unplug a little bit. It's been a long, exhausting year. Yes. Yeah. Yes. All good, man. We got some great shows coming up. Sook, uh, you heading off into the sunset? I am, gentlemen. I am. I am. All right, we'll see you tomorrow. We'll see you tomorrow. Susan Anton tomorrow. Steve Greenberg, the gadget guy, going to be a great show. I love Suki. Steve Greenberg. I love him. Yay. Yeah, he's great. We'll see you tomorrow, babe. Bye, see guys. you, Suki. Bye-bye. Bye. Philly kid in the place to be. Woo-hoo. Man, it's glad to be back. Up, Phil. Yeah, wow. Look at us coming back. Seems like we. Ne seems like a long time, but now it seems like we never left. I know.
let's, you know, just jump right back into these seats, and here we are. Like we never left, Philly. Could I, I actually FaceTimed you from Nashville. Um, the place was insane. What were we, we were singing, right? What were we singing? I, I don't even remember. Was it Don't Stop? Uh, sweet. Or- now, uh, let's see, was Sweet, Sweet Caroline. Caroline. Oh, was it? Yeah, and some girl, I some girl came on. She was sticking her tongue out at you. My wife was mortified. <laughs> and, yeah, that's uh, uh, that place is wild, man. Uh, we got we got to make it there together one night. Oh, dude, it's a, <laughs> it, it was in, it was absolutely insane. Four nights of just total debauchery, um, <laughs> and it was just it was so much fun. Uh, I don't know how people do that every night. I don't know if I could do it every night of the week, treat my body that way. Oh, yeah, me either. I'm too old. But uh, it was it was so much fun, man. I mean, just all day and night, just singing and and just dancing. And you run into people you know in the middle of nowhere. And is I mean, it, the place was absolutely insane. It was yeah, insane. I, you know, uh, you know, Scott called me from Nashville on FaceTime and, and said, hey, look, look at this street and pointed down the street. <laughs> I mean, there were thousands of people running yeah, around. Thousands there. Of people. The, the young lady who I co-host um, this week in WWE with um, my buddy Elise, she happened to be having her bachelorette party in Nashville that week. Right. Um, that weekend. So we, we, we ran into her and her friends and it's just. It, it's an insane asylum. It really is. It's it's so much fun. Um, and then I ended up in the Hamptons for a couple of days, visiting some friends. Talk about lifestyles of the rich and famous, dude. Oh my <laughs> god. I bet. Uh, I bet. It is. Ju- it's it's a, a whole nother world. I mean, a whole nother world out in the Hamptons uh, on Long Island. Uh, well, you know, it, it's nothing that you know a, a seven-time Emmy award, Emmy award winner like yourself, who is <laughs> who has more money than the law should allow. Yeah, you, I'm sure you fit right in there, Scott. Oh, I, I fit right in there. Yeah, I mean, I was, uh, you know, thank God our friends uh, rented a house and uh, they let us come hang for a little while. But it was, uh, I I could fit right in there for like you know ten, fifteen, twenty million a year. I could do it. <laughs> But yeah, uh, yeah. Hey, speaking amazing. of uh, speaking of Emmy winners, you know, I noticed that uh, earlier in the show you said that uh, Suki and Scott is still writing number one in the yeah. uh, stir platform. Phil, if I kid you not, uh, the Suki and Scott show is still the number one show. Number le- okay, leave that up for just just a second. Okay, check this out, everybody. So the stir platform, Suki and Scott is number one for you know I don't know how many weeks now, but it's got to be at least twelve weeks. Yeah, I mean, uh, above such shows as Heartland, Showtime at the Apollo, Deal or No Deal, Forensic Files, the Johnny Carson Show, and just to name some of the legendary shows that 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 is on that platform. Yeah, it, you know, it just goes to show you how you know awesome the Suki and Scott show is. And celebrities from around the world are yep. clamoring and fighting tooth and nail to get on the Suki and Scott show. It's it's, yeah, it's no, great, it's, Phil. And we you know we, we we developed a few programs. I was telling Suki earlier how I found this. I've never tried CBD oils. Everybody always says how it's great for people our age. You mm-hmm. got aches, you got pains. I was in a car accident years ago, so my neck always hurts, my shoulders, my knees always bother me. So I tried the CBD oil out a couple, uh, maybe a week ago. Um, You do a couple days, you just a little drop and it just, you know, you do it daily and it goes under your tongue and it it just, Mm -hmm. it, 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 right into your, into your your stream. And I got to tell you, since I was doing it, I don't have any aches or pains. It's almost like oil for your joints, right? Yeah. Yeah. um, It's really great. I mean, CBD oils are becoming huge right now. So I'm putting a program together with these folks. Uh, it's like part of Pfizer. It's really cool, um, and and I'm gonna we're gonna do like an offer for our audience, you know, to go on their site with a promo code and save some money. And it's it's not very expensive anyway, but it's really cool. And uh, you know, I'm, I want to introduce it to everybody. Maybe next week or the week after. Um, and also, you and I, and Suki too. We have uh, we're getting involved with a, a company that sells. Uh, t-shirts and shirts and hoodies uh, to help out disabled vets. Right. Um, so, you know, all the, the, the money goes to the charity and we're going to, you and I are going to be wearing those shirts soon. Um, mm-hmm. And it's going to be great. We got a lot of things to help promote. Uh, and there's no, no better than, you know, the disabled vets to help out across the country. Um, right. And it's going to be, uh, we got, we got a lot of things coming up, but listen, I'm going to stop talking because if people <laughs> don't hear you sing, 
they're just going to, they're all going to faint. The, you know, our videos that you and I put up, it's just not enough to satiate their appetite. Look at those big words I'm throwing out. Yeah. Uh, Satiate their appetite for you singing. Um, So I got to, I got to let you get in a couple tunes and uh, we, we listen, Phil's page is still down. So anybody getting friend requests, I know people talk about it. Phil does not have a page right now. Correct, Phil? That is correct. I do not have any pages on Facebook. Right. So, so if you're anything. being contacted by somebody that's, uh, you know, posing as me, I, I guarantee you, I promise you, it is not me. Because I, I, I'm, I'm getting messages on Instagram from people who are saying, hey, uh, do you still love me? And, <laughs> you know, I'm like, you weren't talking to me. You weren't, <laughs> you weren't talking to me. I promise you that those are scammers. Those are scammers. Will you still love me tomorrow? tomorrow. But anyway, we're going to, we're working on getting Phil back up on Facebook, but until, until we tell you that he has a new Facebook page, do not answer anybody who comes at you with the name, uh, Phil. Phil Paz, Phil Paz, Phil Piz, Phil Pizzy, anything that's got those letters, the P, the H, the I, the P, and the Z, nothing. Yeah. But we'll let you know when he's uh, when he's up and running. Anyway, Philly kid, let's uh, let's sing some songs, shall we? Okay. I thought it was started off with a little uh, sea of love. Come with me, my love. To the sea, the sea of love. I want to tell you how much I love you. Do you remember when we met? That's the day I knew you were my pet. And I want to tell you how much I love you. Come with me to the sea of love. Do you remember? When we met, that's the day I knew you were my pet. I want to tell you how much I love you. I want to tell you how much I love you. Come with me to the sea of Phil, I'll tell you, we got some uh, we got some good people coming on soon. I know um, you do. I know you do. We really do. This week we actually have um hold on, we'll be correct. You know what happened? I put out a a date for Melba Moore, but I put out the wrong date. Um, she actually just responded and said it's wrong. Um, we have, t- so tomorrow night we got Susan Anton, who of course was a big supermodel. Actress. Yeah. Um, I think she was, uh, she was married to Dudley Moore at one point. She still looks incredible, beautiful lady. Oh yeah. Um, and also Steve Greenberg is, is like the gadget guy. He does like a game show where you have to ask questions and you have to guess what the hell the gadget does. Um, so it's pretty funny. So I think, um, you know, maybe that maybe you, me and Sue will play that game with him. Nice. Um, and then Brenda K. Starr is on on Thursday. Another uh, legendary singer. Uh, I'm just I, for some every time I hear Brenda K. Starr, I, hear, I miss you. I miss you. There's no other way to say it. And I, I can't deny cause I'm it. That's Brenda K. Star. And also this guy, Randy Roberts, who's a, a Cher and Bette Midler impersonator. Nice. He is he's phenomenal. He's actually going to be in his dressing room before he's doing a show. So he's going to be dressed in full Cher attire. 
Um, so that's going to be pretty cool. And then, you know, you go down the line. We got the spinners are coming on the show. Woo! Aren't the spinners working my way back to you, you babe? Isn't that the spinners, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. The burning love inside. Yeah, I'm working my way. Um, Chaz Palminteri is coming back on. He's got some things cooking. A uh, huge movie star. Um, we have an 11-year-old uh, young lady from Russia who is like a singing musical prodigy. Uh, she's going to be in the States for a little while. She's coming on. Um, the lead singer from Night Ranger is coming on the show. Sister nice. Christian, oh, the time has come. Remember that song? Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. And, of course, Melba Moore is coming on. She's coming on on the 29th. So we, we got a full two, two three weeks coming up. Um, and it's going to be great, man, along with some other. Phil Collins' ex-wife, uh, Orion Collins, yeah, um, she's coming on. She's got all kinds of beauty products that she wants to tell our audience about. Um, Doctor Ian's coming back from the doctors, so it's gonna be pretty cool. We got some and and D Snyder. I'm supposed to hear from D Snyder any minute. We're gonna <laughs> so whatever date he tells us he can come on. We're gonna slip D Snyder in uh, to to whatever show that we can get D on. Um, yeah, yeah, so yeah. That'll be pretty cool. Yeah, that'll be so. Fun. What did I tell you, folks? Uh, people from celebrities from around the world are clamoring fighting tooth and nail mm -hmm. to get on to the Suki and Scott show. Yes. And uh, you know? Patricia says, Scott, shut up and let Philip sing. <laughs> so uh, that's Thank exactly, you, Patricia. That's exactly <laughs> what I'm going to do. Hey, look, so Jeannie, Scott, Philip, right? So, yeah. okay. Here okay. Well, hey, the spinners are coming on uh, here in a little bit. So let's- Light it uh, up, Philly. Light it here up. Here we go. Now this- is our fork in the road love's last episode now there's nowhere to go oh no you made your choice and now it's up to me to bow out gracefully and though you hold the key, my baby, whenever you call me, I'll, I'll be, be there. there. Whenever you want me, Scotty, I'll be there. Whenever you need me, I'll be there. I'll be around. Now I, I knew just what to say. Now I've found out today that all the words had slipped away. But I know there's always a chance a tiny spark will remain. And sparks turn into flame. And love can burn once again. Now I know you know Whenever you call me, Scotty, I'll be there. Whenever you want me, I'll be there. Whenever you need me, I'll be there. Oh, I'll be around. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, I, wait, I keep hitting the wrong button. Hold on. Uh, I love that. So hold on. What was that other song? They also do um, Then Came You. Then came you, right? That was them. Yeah, and you got uh, working, work. It's a, it's a shame the way you mess around with your man. It's a shame. Oh yeah, man, they've got, they've got. They also huh. have. Uh, Could it be I'm falling in love with, with your, your baby. baby? But the number one tune was just the one you were singing. I'll be around. Yeah, that one in. Uh, they also uh, have uh, Rubber Band Man, right? A rubber and, band, uh, rubber band. But the best Cupid, one is, draw back your bow. Is that the spinners? Let, I yeah. don't know if that's the spinners. <laughs> Let's You're see. Straight to my lover's heart for oh, you. That's it. Because oh, they're, they're working my way. I think you and I did Cupid as one of our uh, songs, didn't we? I know. Let's see. Sam Cooke did a version yeah, of that. Yeah, Sam Cooke. Cupid, hold back your bow. And let your arrow sing to my lover's heart for you. Boom, 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 boom. 
boo doo. Right? Because they sang, uh, working my way back to you, babe, with a burning love inside. Yeah, I'm working my way back to you, babe, with a happiness that died. I, I let, let it, it get away. away. Oh. Oh, oh, oh. I've been saying every day. <laughs> yeah, we did, we did do that. We did do that. I think we did that one, right? Yeah. When you were so in love with him. <laughs> been around like I was free. Thought I could have my cake and eat it too. Now I cried over. I may have to put out uh, making it solo, Phil. You 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 couldn't get me going on that one, huh? Little David yeah. Norton. Wow, there's so many uh pitch changes in that thing and it's a fast yeah, but song. See, I, I don't know what those are so it doesn't matter to me <laughs> it doesn't matter yeah i'm still working on it i'm still working on i'm it. solid gold i've got the goods i'm there mm -hmm. when you walk through the neighborhood i'm making it i got the chance i'm taking it no more mm -hmm. no more mm -hmm. making mm -hmm. it mm -hmm. <laughs> This time uh, in life, I'm making it. Uh, uh, uh. Ooh. Making it. All right, go ahead. What do you got? What do you got? What do you like? Oh, how about a little of, uh, hmm. Heard By the way, you, you would fit in great in Nashville because in hundreds of bars with hundreds of bands and hundreds of singers, you could be one of those guys that like pops up on the stage and, and start singing with people. And they'll be like, damn, look at this guy. <laughs> hey, trust me, if I make it to Nashville, I'm in we're in one of those clubs oh, and we're gonna say, Hey, it, man. hey brother, yeah. can I hop up there and sing yeah. a song? Oh, and they're like, Yeah, come on up, <laughs> everybody. You know, you throw them a shot at tequila, and they're like, Yeah, come on up. Uh that, that would be fun, man. That would be yeah, fun. Yeah, it's good. It's so great. But uh, how about a little uh Derek's Bentley and uh beauty from South Alabama? Her daddy had a heart like a nine-pound hammer. Think he even did a little time in the slammer. What was I thinking? She snuck out one night. She met me by the front gate. Her daddy came out of waving that 12-gauge. We tore out the drive. He peppered my tailgate. What was I thinking? Oh, I knew there'd be hell to pay. But that crossed my mind a little too late. Cause I was thinking about a little white tank top sitting right there in the middle by me. I was thinking about a long kiss man just gotta get going where the mind might lead. I know what I was feeling. I know what I was feeling. But what was I thinking? By the county line, the cops were nipping on our heels. We pulled off the road and kicked in the four wheel, shut off the lights and tore through a cornfield. What was I thinking? Out the other side, she was hollering faster. We took a dirt road, had the radio blasting, hit the honky tonk for a little close dancing. What was I thinking? Oh, I knew there'd be hell to pay. But it crossed my mind a little too late Cause I was thinking about a little white tank top Sitting right there in the middle by me I was thinking about a long kiss Man, just gotta get going where the night might lead Well, I know what I was feeling Yeah, I know what I was feeling what was I thinking? Yes. Bam. Uh, Julie Howell would like it if you could sing uh, Lady by Kenny Rogers. Lady. I'm your knight in shining armor, and I love you. <laughs> you have made me what I am, and I am you. Take Lady. It. I'm your knight in shining armor, and I love you. You have made me what I am, and I am your, my love. 
There's so many ways I want to say I love you. Let me hold you in my arms forevermore. You have gone and made me such a fool. I'm so lost in your love and oh we belong together won't you believe in my song you're my lady Nicely done, nicely done, Philly kid. You never cease to amaze. Julie says thank you. She thought it was amazing. Uh, there was another one. Hold on. It just went by. Somebody else had a request. Lady. Oh, how about Unchained Melody by the Righteous Brothers? Okay. The old, whoa, my love, my darling. What? <laughs> like Christopher Walken. <laughs> yeah, that's why. Oh, I... <laughs> my love, yeah, my the... darling. <laughs> I've hungered <laughs> for your love. <laughs> that's uh, um, that's our boy when he did all the impressions. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and it goes a little like this. Oh, my love, my darling. I've hungered for your touch a long, lonely time. And time goes by so slowly and time can do so much are you still mine i need your love i need your love god speed your love to me lonely rivers flow to the sea to the sea to the open arms of the sea Lonely riverside, wait for me, wait for me. I'll be coming home, wait for me. And oh, my love, my darling. I've hungered, hungered for your touch a long, lonely time. And time goes by, oh, so slowly, and time can do so much are you still mine i need your love i said i need your love god speed your love to
Uh, one of our favorite classics, uh, Jackie Whitehead's looking for a little carried your books from school. My eyes are dodging. Playing make believe you're married to me. You were fifth grade, I was sixth when we came to be. Light it up, Billy Kit. My eyes adored you. Oh, I never laid a hand on you. My eyes adored you. Like a million miles away from me, you couldn't see how I adored you. So close, so close and yet so far. Carried your books from school, playing make-believe you're married to me. You were fifth grade and I was sixth when we came to be. Walking home every day over Bonnie Cart Bridge and Bay till we grew into the me and you who went our separate ways. My eyes adored you. Oh, I never laid a hand on you. My eyes adored you. Like a million miles away from me, you couldn't see how I adored you. So close. So close and yet so far. Nice. I'd like to get one of the guys from Jersey Boys on. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> that would be fun, right? Yes. Have a Jersey Boy guy come on and sing sing all those tunes, right? Heck, yeah, man. That would be Late awesome. December back in 63. What a very special time for me. What a lay. Phil, if you sing another song, that'll give me time to go back in and download one of our duets, and we can leave off with one of our recent duets for the for the night. Okay. All right. Uh, so you, okay. You, you pick a tune. When I come back on, you'll know I'm ready to go. <laughs> okay. Here we go. I'll start a little. Uh, do a little Don Williams and Lord. I hope this day I get is good. <clears throat> go ahead. Lord, I hope this day is good. I'm feeling empty and misunderstood. I should be thankful, Lord, I know I should. But Lord, I hope this day is good. Lord, have you forgotten me? I've been praying to you faithfully. I'm not saying I'm a righteous man, but Lord, I hope you understand. I don't need fortune and I don't need fame. Send down the thunder, Lord, send down the rain. But when you're planning just how it will be, Plan a good day for me. Lord, I hope this day is good. I'm feeling empty and misunderstood. I should be thankful, Lord, I know I should. But Lord, I hope this day is good. You've been the king since the dawn of time. All that I'm asking is a little less crime. It might be hard for the devil to do, but it would be so easy for you. Now, Lord, I hope this day is good. I'm feeling empty and misunderstood. I should be thankful, Lord, I know I should. But, Lord, I hope this day is good. <laughs> uh, I'm still working, Phil. Do one okay. more, quick. Do okay. one more. <laughs> Whoa, hey, hey, hey. bet you're wondering how I knew. 
about your plans to make me blue, yeah. With some other guy you knew before. Between the two of us guys, you know I love you more. You took me by surprise, I must say. When I found out yesterday, oh yeah, I heard it through the grapevine. Not much longer would you be mine. Yeah, I heard it through the grapevine. And I'm about to lose my mind, honey, honey, yeah. You know a man ain't supposed to cry. But these tears I can't hold inside. Losing you would end my life, you see. Cause you mean that much to me. You could have told me yourself that you found someone else. Instead, I heard it through the grapevine. Not much longer would you be mine. Oh, I heard it through the grapevine. And I'm just about to lose my mind, honey, honey, yeah. People say you have from what you see and not from what you hear. I can't help being confused. If it's true, won't you tell me, dear? Do you plan to let me go? Let me go. For the other guy that you knew before. Hey, I heard it through the grapevine. Not much longer would you be mine. Hey, I heard it through the grapevine. And I'm just about to lose my mind. Honey, honey, yeah. Come on, Philly kid. What do you say we go back to Riverdale? It's the Archies. Come on now. Sugar. Ba, 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 ba. Ah, honey, honey. You were my candy girl. And you got me wanting you. Ah, oh, Philly. Ah, 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 ah. Ah, Shirley, Shirley. You were my candy girl. And you got me wanting you. I just can't believe the loveliness of loving you. I just can't believe it's true. I just can't believe the wonder love is feeling too. I just can't believe it's true. Oh, oh sugar. Ah, uh, 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 uh. oh, honey, honey. You are my candy girl. And you got me wanting you. Oh, honey. Ah, oh, sugar, sugar. You were my candy girl, and you got me wanting you. Tell us more, Phil. When I kissed you, girl, I knew how sweet a kiss could be. I know how sweet a kiss could be. Like the summer sunshine, pour your sweetness over me. Pour your sweetness over me. Well, sugar. Ba, 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 ba. Ah, honey, honey. I'm gonna make your life so sweet, yeah, yeah, yeah. Pour a little sugar on it, oh yeah. Ah, yeah. Pour a little sugar on it, honey. Ah. Pour a little sugar on it, baby. I'm gonna make your life so sweet, yeah, yeah, yeah. Pour a little sugar on it, honey. Ah, sugar. Ah, honey, honey. You are my candy girl, and you got me wanting you. Honey, honey, uh, 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 uh. sugar, sugar, Philly, Philly. You are my candy girl, and 
you got me wanting you. Oh, Philly kid. Bum, 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 bum. Philly, Philly. <laughs> Ah, <laughs> uh, nice. Oh, hold on. Wrong one. That was awesome, man. Yeah, was... I got to start putting those, getting those at the ready, Phil. I got to line them up. I got to line them up. Yeah, Maybe yeah, yeah. Those show. are nice. Everybody likes them, I think. Yeah, yeah. Those are good. They're really, they're, they're good attitude adjusters. You know what I mean? They're, they're, they're social media cleansers, if you will. Cleanses the palate. Um, listen, man, we'll be back tomorrow night. Uh, we have the legendary Susan Anton will be with us. Um, Steve Greenberg, the gadget guy, going to be some fun gadgets. Going to be another fun show tomorrow night, Phil. Yay! Mm -hmm. Well, good night, sweetheart. Well, it's time to go. Yeah, 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 yeah. Good night, sweetheart. Well, it's time to go. Yeah, 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 yeah. We hate to leave you, but. We really must say, oh, good night, sweetheart. Good night. Go watch the shows on Star, everybody. S T I R. They got it. We got to just keep going. Just keep watching the shows.